Okay, so I'll start by just taking you through the vocabulary review at the beginning of this booklet. So a murus, muri, first one, is a wall. Then a navis is a ship. A rex regis is a king. Uh, nona ginta is the number 90. Decimus means tenth. Ostendere is to show. Um, Kur is a question word meaning why. A hostis is an enemy. Fortiter means bravely. Um, which you need to remember not to confuse with the word forte, which means by chance. Um, pello, pellere, pepuli, pulso means to drive, uh, in the sense of to drive someone out of a place or to drive someone into a place. Um, the kailum or celum is the sky or heaven. Defendere is nice and easy, that's to defend. A tempestas is a storm. Ferox, ferocious means fierce or ferocious. Omnis means all or every. Often you see it in the plural, omnes, meaning everyone, or omnia, neuter, meaning everything. Um, ne is a word that you find in purpose clauses, as we saw recently. So ne plus subjunctive means lest or so that something may not happen. Um, autem uh, is a difficult word to translate. It can mean however, or moreover, or sometimes you translate it as now, when you're just um, telling the reader that you're moving from one topic to a different topic in a text. Um, tutus, number 18, means safe. Labor is work. A libertus is a freedman or an ex-slave. Diu means for a long time. Uh, idoneus means sort of suitable, something is suitable or fit for something. Um, ve uh, vendere is to sell. A uh, homo hominis is a man or human being. And quamquam means although. Okay, and I'm just going to delete a couple of these to make some space so it doesn't mess up the formatting too much. Okay, now, the imperfect subjunctive, okay, the key to this is that you take the infinitive, the present infinitive, which is the second principal part, and then you add the endings m, s, t, mus, tis, nt. So, for example, you do monere, I need to get the accent there. Mon, um, maybe I can't get it. Okay, um, I'll get it uh, this way. Um, so, um, there we go. So, monere, like that. Um, so, you, do, you take monere, the infinitive. Put that in all six boxes, and then you add M, S, T, Mus, Tis, and N, T. And this E is also long. So, monere, moneres, moneret, moneremus, moneretis, monerent. Now, that is the um, active. If you wanted the passive, you would do the same thing. So, you would take that uh, infinitive again, monere. And then you would add, um, yeah, like that, sorry, and then you would add mon uh, R, and then RIS, and then TUR, and then MUR, and then MINI, and then NTUR. Okay, and the I at the end of MINI is a long I, so like that, MONERE MINI. Okay, um, 
Now, there are some recap questions on the second page. In general, what is the difference between the indicative mood and the subjunctive mood? Uh, just like in Italian, the indicativo and the congiuntivo. Now, uh, the indicative mood is basically used for expressing facts or asking questions about facts. So things like, it is raining, or is it raining, um, I am hungry, or am I hungry, right, these kinds of things. Um, on the other hand, the subjunctive is, is more unreal, right? So it's things which are imaginary, it's things which are uh, desires, things which are possibilities, um, things which are intentions or purposes, right? All those kinds of things. Things which are less real than the indicative. And that's roughly speaking how the subjunctive is used in, uh, in English a bit, in Italian, in French, uh, in Latin, uh, and in lots of other languages. Now, uh, number two, give an example in English of a direct command and an indirect command. Okay, a direct command is the kind of order that you get in speech. So you normally see it in speech, and it would be something like, um, I don't know, um, you might, like go away would be a direct command. Right? So this would be direct. The, an indirect version of that would be something like, um, I don't know, um, he or she ordered them to go away. Or, you know, we asked them to go away. He begged them to go away. She advised them to go away. All of those kinds of things. Those would all be indirect commands. Okay, now some verbs, when they introduce an indirect command, take indicative. So, for example, ubere just takes an accusative and an infinitive, right? I order you to leave. So I order is ubeo, te is you, and then uh, to leave, discadere, or discadere, that's the infinitive. Okay? That's the easiest way of doing an indirect command, because it's just like in English. However, there are other verbs, and you can see a, a list of them on the Lesson 40 uh, booklet. There are other verbs, such as imperare, which require a different construction, which is ut or ne plus subjunctive. Ut or ne plus subjunctive. And the e in ne is long. So it's ut or ne, like that, plus subjunctive. Um, now, some verbs take an infinitive, um, <laughs> sorry, I've repeated the same question twice then. I'll just, uh, I'll delete that later. Now, um, in number five, grammatically, this second type of indirect command is identical to a purpose clause. Right? Remember, a purpose clause is when you say in order to. Right? I went to the shops in order to buy food. Right? And that construction, the purpose clause, is identical because it's also ut or ne plus subjunctive. So purpose clauses and indirect commands um, in terms of their grammar, they are both ut or ne plus subjunctive. They are identical. Okay. Um, now, what we're meeting uh, today is the last declension of nouns. Um, and uh, you don't need to worry too much about this fourth declension because it's actually the least common declension, but it's worth just being aware of it so that we've finished it off. So we've already met declensions 1, 2, 3, and 5. And just to remind you, um, here are their endings. Right? So first declension, nouns like quella. Second declension can be masculine nouns like dominus or neuter nouns like bellum. Third declension will be masculine or feminine nouns like rex or neuter nouns like corpus. And fifth declension nouns are nouns like race, meaning a thing or a matter. Um, now, the last one, as I say, uh, is the fourth. Um, and just before we get to that, remember, you can work out a noun's declension. Right? If you learn a new noun and you want to know what declension it is, you can work it out by looking at the nominative and genitive singular. So if the nominative and genitive singular end in a and i, then it's 
first. If it ends in us and e, then it's second declension masculine. If it ends um and e, then it's second declension neuter. Uh, if it has um, really any nominative, but if its genitive ends in is, then it's third declension. And if it's if the nominative and genitive end in ace and a, then it's fifth declension. So now we're adding a fourth, well, the fourth declension. Um, and the fourth declension has the nominative and genitive endings us and us, right? So us with a short u and us with a long u. That's how you can identify a fourth declension noun. Um, the, the noun that we use, or the noun that I'm using as an example of that, is the noun gradus, which is a step. Um, almost all of these nouns are masculine. And just look at the table to see how it goes. Gradus, gradus, gradum. Gradus, gradui, gradu, and in the in the plural, gradus, 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 graduum, gradibus, gradibus. Okay, um, so then, so the the nominative uh, form, and in fact, a lot of forms of this noun look like second declension masculine, right? Gradus looks like dominus, right? They have the us at the end, but the difference is the genitive singular, right? Us instead of e. Um, and it's also, these can be difficult to translate because that ending us appears six times. So it can be difficult. Um, as I say, um, most of these are uh, masculine. Almost all of them are masculine. Two particular exceptions, though, are manus, a hand, and domus, a house. So those two are both worth bearing in mind. So... Um, here is the noun domus, which is difficult because it's a bit irregular. It's a mixture of second and fourth declension. Uh, and, you, and you can see I've put in brackets rarer alternatives for these main endings. So domus, domus, domum. Domus, domui. So that's fourth declension. But then here you get domo, which is second declension. And then in the plural you get domus, domus, domos. So that's fourth, fourth, second. And then domuum, domibus, domibus. That's all fourth. Okay, so it's a bit uh, irregular. Uh, also notice if you are expressing movement to or from a house, a domus, um, you don't need a preposition. So you don't say ad domum, you just say domum. And you don't say a domo, you just say domo. Uh, there's also what's called the locative form domi, and domi means at home. Right. So here is an example. Um, the women hurried home. Mulieres domum festinaverunt. Not ad domum, just domum. And again here, the women lived at home. Mulieres domi habitabant. Domi is that locative form. Um, okay, and then here you can see there is a bit of practice forming these. So with um, manus, how would you form it? Well, manus, it meaning a hand, is regular, so you can just follow the pattern here. Manus, manus, manum, manus, manui, manu. Okay? Um, so I'm going to write it on this, uh, on this Word document. And then uh, I'll paste it up here. So you'll have manus, manus, manum. Uh, and then, as you can see, manus, manui, manu, manui, manu, okay, so there's, um, so there's the singular, okay, and then in the plural, again, you just follow the table. So manus, 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 manuum, manibus, manibus. So you get manus three times. Manuum, manibus, manibus. So there we go. So for plural, it's like that. Okay. Um, and then similarly we have exercitus, which is a, a noun which means an army, fourth declension masculine. Okay. So again, 
um, it's, it's, it's basically the same but with a different stem, right? So what you'll have is exerkitus, right? So I'll just copy and paste it like this. Exerkitus, exerkitus, exerkitum, exerkitus, exerkitui, and then exerkitu. And then the plural, exerkitus, 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 exerkituum, and then exerkitibus, exerkitibus. Right? Um, and then we can do the same, sorry, we can do the same for portus, portus, which is a harbor. Okay? So again, we just change the stem. So we get portus. So portus, portus, and then we get um, portum, and then the genitive singular portus, dative singular portui, ablative singular portu, and then in the plural, portus, 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 and then portuum, and then portibus, and then portibus again. Now, the one that is difficult here is oculus oculi. This is a bit of a trick because oculus oculi is not fourth declension, it's second declension. And we know that because of the genitive singular ending with a long I. So in fact, this one will go oculus, um, I'm sorry, that will go oculus ocule oculum, and then oculi, Ocula, ocula. So, like that. That will be the, the singular. Okay. And then the plural will be, because this goes like dominus, right? So, oculi, um, oculi, oculos, oculorum, oculis, and oculis. Okay, so that will be the plural there. Okay. Okay. So notice numbers one to three are fourth declension, but number four is second declension. Okay. And now there is some practice. So, Dominus servi domum novam ei dedit. So, Dominus servi. Servi is genitive here. So, the slaves master, the master of the slave, did it a, gave to him, gave him a domum novam, a new house. Um, notice novam because dom, domus is, is feminine. Um, okay, so now in number two, nostri. Now nostri means our men, right? It's masculine plural and it's on its own without a noun. So our men Pugnabant were fighting in gradibus templi on the steps of the temple. Telis et gladiis. Those are both ablatives of instruments with weapons and swords. And then in number three, uh, dux exercitus uh, milites in montes duxit. So the leader of the army. So exercitus is genitive singular. Led the led his soldiers or led the soldiers, duxit milites, into the mountains in montes in plus accusative. Uh, and then number four, um, the main verb is tene barmus, which means we were holding or keeping or something like that. Perhaps keeping in this sentence, the nautas miseros, the wretched sailors. In Porto, in the harbor, in plus ablative, of the enemy. So hostium is genitive plural. Okay, and then number five, we have, let's see, omnes servi ex domo venie bunt, uh, venie bant, sorry, ut ad port, uh, portum currerent. So omnes servi, all the slaves were coming, venie band, out of the house, ex domo, and here you have ut plus subjunctive, in order to run ad portum, towards 
or to the harbour. Um, yes, and then number six, vos, that means you, and the main verb is cupitis, so you plural want, ambulare, to walk, in montibus, in the mountains, or out, luderet, play, in the river, in flumine. Now, in number seven, it begins with num, which is a question word that expects the answer no, so it means surely not. Okay, so surely you plural will not build. So idf carbitis is future tense. Will not build houses, domos, proper portum, near the harbor. Proper plus accusative, near the harbor. Now, number eight, non ne, that's the opposite. That's surely expecting the answer yes. So surely, um, and then there's no subject here, so we just take the subject from inside imperavit. Surely he or she ordered, and impera, imperare takes dative. That's why duci or duki is dative singular. So he or she ordered the leader of the army. So exercitus would be, um, would be genitive uh, singular here, of the army. Ut, so here we have our indirect command, to attack the city. So you have ut plus subjunctive, opugnaret is imperfect subjunctive. Okay, then in number nine, nos, we, navigavimus, sailed, uh, tutti, safely, in portum, into the harbour, multis cum navibus, with many ships, that's just cum plus ablative. Uh, and don't worry about the word order there, if it was cum multis navibus, the meaning would be exactly the same. It's just that sometimes Latin likes to sandwich the preposition between the adjective and the noun. And then, number 10, quis. Okay, so quis means who. Who, fert, who is carrying the pecuniam regis, the, the king's money. So regis is uh, genitive singular. The king's money um, in his or her hand in manibus, in plus ablative. Um, okay, and then we have some English into Latin. So, uh, in number one, okay, in number one, you have, um, he will lead, okay, so that's do... Du, ducere is to lead. The future is ducam duces ducet. So ducet, he will lead. The army, exercitum. I'll paste it into the Google Doc in a moment. Uh, the army, exercitum, accusative case, towards the harbour ad portum. Okay, so you would have uh, something like this. Uh, except that what you might want to do is put ducet at the end, because it's the main verb. Okay, then the leader of the army. Okay, so leader is dux, and then of the army, exercitus. So we want the genitive singular of the army. Was erat a brave soldier, fortis miles. Miles, like that. So, dux, dux exercitus erat fortis miles. Now, here again, I would say put erat at the end because it's the main verb. So, fortis miles erat. Or you could also put the adjective after. It's probably a bit more common to have fortis after the noun. So, miles fortis. Then in number three, the enemy were defending. So, the enemy is hostes. Were defending, defendebant, the homes, domos, of the inhabitants, in colarum, genitive plural. Okay, so you want it to be something like that. But again, I would put defendebant at the end because it's the main verb. Okay, and then. All the old men, okay, so that's omnes 
senes were sitting, okay, so sedebant, uh, near the harbour proper portum. So you should have something like that. And again, what we might do is move sedebant to the end of the sentence. Okay. Now, yesterday, yesterday is heady. My father, pater meus, wounded, vulneravit, the hand, so manum, of the good slaves, so servi boni. Okay. So, there you are. Okay. And then what I would do again is I'd put the verb at the end. Okay, he looked at, so spectavit, the walls, muro, uh, muros, of the house. Okay, so now for of the house, you we're going to use domus, okay, and just as a reminder, okay, just notice that the genitive here, right, domus, so this is one of the forms that's still um, fourth, uh, fourth declension, right, so domus, okay, so then we take that, there it is, okay, and again, as usual, let's put the verb at the end. Okay, then, the king advised the chief. Okay, so, rex monuit principem. A princeps is a prince or a chief. Uh, now, with monere, we need now ut plus subjunctive. Okay, so, to ut, to lead ut duce... Ret. Okay, so we want the third person singular imperfect subjunctive, which is the infinitive plus the letter T, duceret. Um, his army, exercitum, and you could say exercitum um, eus or exercitum suum or something, uh, and then home, right, is domum. So you'd have something like that. And again, I would put monuit, you could put it right at the end or just at the end of its clause. So rex principem monuit ut ut, and then I would put duceret at the end here. So ut exercitum domum duceret. Okay, now we will lead, okay, so this is duceret again, ducemus, we will lead, the armies, okay, so armies, exercitus, so we want the, um, Accusative plural, exercitus, okay, so exercitus, uh, towards the river, ad flumen, ad flumen, like that. So ducemus, exercitus, ad flumen, and again, move the main verb to the end, like that. Okay, and then we were sitting, okay, so sede bamus, we were sitting, on the steps, in gradibus, of the beautiful house. Okay, so domus, okay, and then beautiful. Now, for beautiful, we need to know what is the gender of domus. So check back, it's actually feminine, very unusually for this declension. So we need pulcrai, because it has to be feminine genitive singular. Okay, and again, let's put that verb sedebamus at the end. And then we have number 10, the farmer carried the food. Okay, so the farmer is agricola, carried is portavit, or if you want, tulit, and then food is chibum, in his large hands. Okay, so in manibus, and again, you want to check the gender of manus, you see here it's feminine. So in manibus, uh, so now we want magnus in the feminine ablative plural, which is magnis. Okay, so again, let's move this over there. 
or Tarvit. Um, and again here you could put manis before manibus if you want. Um, sometimes adjectives of size or quantity go before the noun, but it, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, so that would be uh, sentence 10. Uh, and then at the very end here, we've got a bit more vocabulary. Okay, uh, so let's just go through those. So a porta is a gate, quoque is also, eo ira is to go, and anchilla is a slave girl. De means about, well, yes, uh, about, about or down from, and it takes the ablative. Or you could say concerning. Auxilium is help, maritos is a husband, a nuncios is a messenger, a captivos is a prisoner or captive. Convenire is to, to, to gather together, basically, or come together. Uh, Apropinquare is to approach or go near something. Tradere is to hand over. And urbs is a city. Skelos is a crime. Perteritos means terrified. Novos means new. Olim means once or once upon a time. Uh, then uh, ibi means there or in that place. Dishedere or diskedere is to depart or leave. Pecunia is money. Mile is a thousand. Agricola is a farmer. Quairere or quairere is to seek or look for something. A regina is a queen. And is eid means that. Or it can mean he, she, it if there's no noun going with it.